Almost 250 years ago, nearly 2,000 local farmers and other community members met Governor Tryon and about 1,000 members of the Royal Militia right here at Alamance Battleground. This is really a fight between two separate factions of North Carolinians. You have one group of backcountry farmers who in, are in the western part of North Carolina who are upset over uh, illegal fees, corrupt public officials. We come here to see justice done. Not in this matter. This court will not. This allow court us. cheats us. We need yeah. new jurors. Everybody's against us. Just like a and they organize together and they give themselves the name Regulators. So they met here. There was a large battle at what is now Alamance Battleground. And the repercussions of this battle sent shockwaves through colonial North Carolina through uh, the American colonies, and it added to the growing unrest throughout the colonies that eventually led to the American War for Independence. The battle begins with a standoff of sorts, where Governor Tryon has his militia assembled, he has artillery in place, and he, by law, has to read a riot act to the regulators. It's an actual piece of legislation that states that uh, a group of a certain number or more who are in unlawful assembly have to disperse. They'll be given a certain amount of time to disperse, and if they don't, he's completely prepared to use deadly force against them. The regulators showed up not expecting Governor Tryon to have his forces fire on citizens, on his citizens. Many of them showed up unarmed. They're in camp, they know that Governor Tryon is close by, and they write one final petition. Governor Tryon gets that petition, and based on what he writes back to them, it's very clear that he is very upset with them that they've put him in this position and he uh, very much considers the regulators to be uh, sealing their own fates. In answer to your petition, I am to acquaint you that I have ever been attentive to the true interest of this country and to that of every individual residing within it. I lament the fatal necessity to which you have now reduced me. He's saying, I have no choice. This is all because of your actions. I don't want to do this, but I'm going to have to. The regulators, uh, when they're congregated together, they uh, act in, in such a way as to invite the battle. And when Governor Tryon reads the Riot Act and orders them to disperse and is giving them this warning that they're going to be fired upon, the, the shouts back that they give are battle, battle. And there are some that say fire and be damned. And they're egging on the militia, trying to get them to fire, trying to force a confrontation of some kind. And Governor Tryon decides that he's going to order the militia to fire and so he gives the command, fire and the militia sits there. This was asking North Carolina citizens to fire on North Carolina citizens, and they were taken aback and they hesitated. They're afraid to fire. And so again, he gives the command, fire. And again, the militia is too scared to fire. And so Governor Tryon turned to them and said, fire on them or fire on me. You will fire on them or on me? It's at that point when the artillery begins to fire. So the idea behind that story is that the militia, being locals from this area anyway, they're having to fire on people that they know. Uh, in some cases, they, they could be uh, friends or family members, and they're not willing to do it. I think because the regulators had actually had a standoff with Governor Tryon three years before, in 1768, and that did not result in bloodshed, and, and tensions sort of eased off after that, I think they felt that just by a big show of force, they would compel the governor to make the changes that they were looking for. Certainly not thinking that they were going to be fired upon and that you know, their friends were going to die and that they would take bodily injury, um, but they were very wrong.
at historic sites, we're trying to recreate the past for all people. And that's not just preserving the land, but that's preserving the view shed, that's preserving the sound, that's preserving the historical environment so people feel like they've stepped back in time. We've got a crowdfunding campaign through GoFundMe.com. We're raising $500,000 to preserve this land. $500,000, it sounds daunting, but with a crowdfunding campaign, every little bit helps. People can give a dollar. No amount is too small. If every citizen in North Carolina gave 50 cents, we would more than exceed this goal.